Hi, Karen Fisher. Here's what happened in Karen Toss podcast. And um, thank you so much for doing this and for making these projects, these films, and this series because I've grown up basically <laughs> with them. And uh, while I was watching the series, I realized that we that this the films and then also this new series is about growing pains. And if it was to if it would be a book that Harper would write, it would be about the growing pains of Black people and about this collective group of um, characters because they all are learning something new about themselves and about their relationships and about their dynamics, even as adults, even as 40 and up and like early 50s. Like we don't stop learning, we don't stop growing. So for e for both of you, Morris and Malcolm, like what would you say has been was the greatest learning curve for the characters throughout the years? And for you personally and professionally as actor and as writer and director, because I think for and for particular um for your cat for Lance his character his learning curve was was learning how to grow through grief and how to grow how to become a parent and a friend and uh, through grief and like learning how to let go and also to move on so for you but for the two of you like what's the learning curve for your characters and for yourselves? Well, Lance has has had to and I, I'll go first, Mal. Um, Lance has had to overcome so much in every single film. I mean, the first he had to overcome uh, his 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 best man sleeping uh, with his with his bride um, to be, um, and then in the second film he had to overcome the death of his wife, who was his rock, who was the the the, the backbone of their family, um, and so that that actually does carry over into into this version of the best man. And, and then soon is, and I, and I don't think that, I wouldn't say that Lance ever gets over Mia, but as soon as, as soon as he's able to, he feels like he's kind of, uh, he, 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 he's, um, he's a little stable, he's stable with it. Um, you know, there's another challenge, a personal challenge, a personal family challenge that he's presented with. And um, so that's, it's, it's, that's just where he's been. That, the, the, so the, his, his arc is, 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 is very steep. Yeah, and just to add to that, I mean, yeah, you know, we 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 wanted to challenge all the characters, you know. I mean, you know, Lance has always been a central figure who always um, had his faith challenged, and the 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 the, the third uh, iteration of of the story does that. But we're challenging all the characters. You know, Harper is like, you know, trying to figure out, you know, his art versus his commerce, right? Like, you know, like I, I want to be taken seriously as an artist, but like I also don't want to be broke again. Um, you know, Robin is, is, you know, trying to figure out like if she wants to keep staying on the hamster wheel, you know, it's like keep working all the time or, and, 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 and is she satisfied just being a wife and mother, you know, the, what does she want for herself? Um, you know, merch, you know, uh, is, 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 you know, he, he's always, his heart's always been in the right place. He's always been, you know, a giver and a, and a, and a helper of people, but who's helping merch, you know? Um, so he's, you know, figuring that out himself, you know, Quentin, um, you know, like making that the, the big leap to like, hey, like, I'm, I, I don't know that I want to be alone the rest of my life. Like, like, I never thought marriage was for me because, you know, of the examples I saw of marriage was not really like healthy. So like, you know, how, but, but is that, is that who I am? Am I my father's child or am I my own self? So we try to challenge all the characters and, you know, for me personally, yeah, I mean, I think when we turn a certain age, and certainly at the age of, of these characters, there's a lot of reevaluation just because your body forces you to, your children force you to, your parents force you to, your spouse, and then when any internal, you know, struggle that you're 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 dealing with, it's like, oh, like life is not as I planned it or as I wanted it to be, you know, initially. Um, and I think that's you know even more so with, with the global pandemic that happened, we're all shut in. There was a lot of reevaluation that went on, and we wanted to reflect that in the series. Yeah. So this question is for both you, and Morris and Malcolm. So one of the things that I love about what we can now call a franchise is that we have the two films and we have this series that it allows us to really get to know these characters, and we learn so much more about them in the series than we got to know in the in the in the two films and I think that's the beauty of having the opportunity to do a series because you get to really explore these characters we really get to see for instance Lance's grief and how his grief is actually impacting his relationship with his children and how that I think stops him from seeing certain things because he wants he wants to he doesn't want change he lost his wife and he doesn't he wants to keep his kids as 
as they are because that's who Mia knew them to be. Well, that's the way I interpreted it. Um, but in, in having the series and in getting to explore these, can you talk about the things that you that you never thought to get to see these characters do, whether it be like exploring their parenthood or their friendships in, in a new way for you, Morris, like talk about getting to new to learn Lance in a new way and getting the time as an actor to explore him over the course of shooting the show. And for you, Malcolm, getting the chance to explore these characters in a way that you wouldn't have been able to with a film and working with a writing crew that could interject and offer their suggestions that you wouldn't have had before. And um, Mars, we can go with you. Um, well, oh, well, the um, the storyline with my with my son in this in this uh, in this version is definitely something I I would never have anticipated. I would never have thought it, it would have been this. And I think I think that's actually really good. You know, I think the character had a has a great arc um, and then a new challenge. Um, so that's something that I would have never that I would never thought he would have gone this way. You know, <clears throat> there was the desire was always to do a third picture, and I wrote a script for that, and it was gonna, we were going to make that happen. And I had a fourth picture in my head, but when I, once I couldn't mount the third, I thought, how how about a, a, a limited series? Um, and and you know, delve into television. And I I had I had just started you know um, getting into the the television um, uh, part of the of of the entertainment industry trying to figure it out and it was good that I got you know um to do it with these characters because I knew who they were you know and being able to collaborate with other writers um was actually really great um I all the people that we hired really loved the best man and the best man characters and wanted to you know expand on them now you know some of their ideas were a little like nah we're not doing that <laughs> Not doing that, y'all. But you know, like I, it all. It was great to like get some ideas, and because you know, look, as 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 Raul Peck, who was one of my professors at NYU, who's a renowned filmmaker, now said to me, like, you know, not not everything is in our heads. So it was beautiful to be able to like, you know, get feedback from other people and how they interpreted these characters of the best man. And, you know, uh, things that I was like, oh, that's how that affects me. That's interesting. I hadn't thought of it in that way. So it was beautiful to do that with, with, with writers. It was beautiful to, 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 you know, let go of the directing reins. I didn't think I was, I would, I'd be comfortable with that completely, but I was, you know, particularly with the, with the, with the directors that we had, you know, Robert Townsend, Charles Stone, Stacey Muhammad, you know, really, really, you know, uh, Robert, you know, being the most accomplished um, of all of us, um, you know, it was great to, 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 to work with him and, and be zoomed out as a producer and kind of say, okay, well, let me give you this note. And, oh, I like how you're doing that. Like, oh, I hadn't thought about that. That's a great way to like get into the scene and blah, blah, blah. So it was, it was, it was great, you know, a, a great collaboration to tell you the truth. I, I, I welcome more of it. Great, thank you so much. And I welcome more of whatever you would have to do in the future. Like I'm with Morris on getting a story with Candace and merch. Like Regina is like fantastic. And like I want I would love to get to know more of them, especially with the kids. Like see how all the kids interact because we never we never really got them to see the kids interact. Yeah, we had some storylines planned for the kids, but <laughs> <laughs>